Yes, everyone. Uh, very good evening and uh, very warm welcome to the session. Happy to meet you all back today in this very important and a little bit simple session. All right. So this is Dr. Saranya. I am talking to you on a very important lecture on the types of species. So this comes under your unit 10 of ecology for your CSER net examination. Right. So this is little bit about me. I did my PhD in biomaterials. I was working with the scaffolds for tissue engineering applications, 3D scaffolds from uh, no, a biodegradable material. I do have 15 papers of pretty good impact and I am into teaching and research for the past greater than 10 plus years and I have guided many students and you can check out my publications here. This is my profile at an academy. I am teaching you, I am inspiring you, I am guiding you all and I am helping you out in the preparations for a long time. Alright, fine. So now today we are going to learn about the different types of species. Before learning in detail about the different types of species, let us first understand what is a species. Alright. Yes, yes, Abdullah. Very good evening. Who else there on board? Good evening all. Happy to meet you all back. Alright. Yes. Good everyone. So the species is nothing but it is a group of individuals that can breed. Okay. Yes, Kavya. Right. Absolutely. So, species is that which is able to breed. Okay, fine. So, if there are two animals, okay, so they are looking alike, right, fine, but they are not breeding. So, do you call them as the, they belong to the same species? Do you think that, yes, Himani, yes, Nandini, yes, Pallabi, ah, Tanima, very good evening all, come on. Right. Huh. So, if at all the two species are looking alike, okay, but they are not interbreeding, will you call them as they belong to the same species? No, you don't call them as the same species. So, the characteristics of belonging to the same species is that, yes, yeah, Shivam, they should interbreed, then only you can call it as a species, okay. Right, that's good. So, let us see the variety of species. Mm, absolutely, yeah, Tanima. You don't call them. So, you have a variety of types of species. Yes, Charan. So, amongst them, the most common one, it is what is called as the keystone species, umbrella species, flagship, indicator, dominant and invasive. So, these are the topics that we are going to see today in this different types of species. Alright, coming to the first one, keystone. Can you find an arch here? Yes, you find an arch here. Okay, so do you know which stone of this arch is called as a keystone? What do you mean by keystone? If you remove that stone, the total arch... It is going to collapse. Which stone is the keystone for this arch? Huh. Can you guess it? Which is going to be the keystone of this arch? If you take it out, the total arch is going to collapse. What is that stone? It is going to be this black fellow. Yes? How many number of black stones are there? Only one, no? Yes, absolutely. So, correct. So, this is what is called as the keystone. Because if you remove this, all these are going to fall down. This is also going to fall down. So, correct Nandini. Yes, Bishkan. Yes, Kavya. Charan. Correct everyone. So, if at all you are removing this particular black stone, all this stone will lose balance and the total ecosystem is going to collapse. So, is there many number of such black stone present? No, only one black stone is present. Likewise, in case of the ecosystem, yeah, Himani, there is going to be this keystone species, they are all low in abundance. That means it is very, very less in number. See, this one is very less in number. They are low in abundance, right? 
but even then the importance is quite high got it like this stone that is why these species are called as the keystone species yes absolutely it is going to control other but it is less in number if at all you remove this species it is making the total ecosystem to collapse yes absolutely yeah nazneen greening right so this is what it is happening with the keystone so only three points you are going to remember regarding the keystone one it is low in number it is highly important if you remove them the total ecosystem is collapsing right fine so we'll see one beautiful example of the keystone species okay right so who you see here happily swimming in the sea who is this it is going to be the sea otter okay right so what does this sea otter does this sea otter is very happily swimming in the sea right fine now i am going to remove the sea otter so that is what it is happening in the second condition can you see the sea otter is absent here so the sea otter it is an example of the keystone species how many key sea otter is present just only one of the sea otter is present right so now it is absent here if i remove this one sea otter can you find a major difference between these two picture one i told you the sea otter is absent what else ha ah, yes what else you can observe the difference between these two ecosystem yes what has happened there what is occurring in this uh, thing there actually yes what is the difference that is looking uh, taking place between these uh, two things ha huh? so the kelp is overgrazed isn't it that is totally destroyed right number 2 you can find there are more number of sea urchin okay right so there is no one to check the sea urchin so the sea urchin became more in number yes and the kelp is totally eaten by this too much of sea urchin so that is the overgrazing absolutely right so the total ecosystem it is now damaged isn't it the total ecosystem is damaged or it is collapsed why because you removed only one item that is going to be the sea otter if you remove the sea otter the total ecosystem is becoming damaged and empty so is it good to call them as the keystone species yes or no ha huh? absolutely so the sea otters are the good examples of the keystone species because you had three set of conditions what were they number 1 it is it is going to be if you remove them the ecosystem is going to collapse right same thing happened they are low in abundance only one uh, this fellow is only more yes this is only one right so that is also correct third one it is having a very high impact so absolutely these all goes with the definition of the keystone species got it yes so the other examples includes the alligator apart from that all the bees ha ah. so the bees are they coming under this prey predator relationship the first one that we saw the sea otter versus sea urchin it is a prey predator relationship isn't it correct what about the bees does the bees come under the uh, no come under this prey predator relationship do you think so do they come under the prey predator relationship no the bees they are not the prey predator relationship so it doesn't mean that if you take the keystone species they should be always it is prey predator relationship it is not mandate it may be the prey predator relationship it may follow the other type of relationships too like how the bees it is pollinating hummingbird it is pollinating 
and what does this african elephants do see they are clearing the forest and giving isn't it ha ah, so it is clearing the forest and giving off right so whenever it is going to clear the forest and give it is going to be uh, very easy for other organisms to eat up okay so that also comes there and the flying fox bat it is also helping in pollination so these are the examples of the keystone species yes all so shall we make a grand summary of these uh, things that we have learnt regarding the keystone species yes everyone so whenever you are learning please make handy notes such that you don't spend one more time in making notes all right yes so note making is an art so whenever you are studying please make a notes aside is it shivam what about others is my voice clear am i audible Ah, am I not audible? Oh my God! I'll just check it out, guys. I hope that I'm audible now. Okay, good, good. Yeah, sure. Probably you refresh once. Right. Thank you, Nandini. Keystone species. It is going to be low in abundance. Ah, thank you, Anupama. It is low in abundance. Right, and then. Ah, what happens? It is going to have a high impact, right? So if you remove them, then what will happen? If you remove them, thank you, Nazneen. So it is going to make the ecosystem to collapse. Yes, right. So the examples we learnt, it is including the. see otter and then the bees right elephants mixed examples we saw it is not that always it should be the uh, prey predator relationship clear all right so good so we will make a move towards the next type of species type 2 so this is what it is called as the indicators species oh shivangi is it Oh my God! Just check out the resolution, guys. I am checking out in my mobile too, but it is very clear for me. It is not buffering for me. Uh, maybe you just try to check out with that resolution something. All right? Okay. Good, everyone. Come on. Yes, yes. All right. So coming to this type second that we are learning today, it is on the indicator species. Okay. All right. So if you take the indicator species. what is an indicator you have used ph indicator right where else you use the indicator while driving ha uh, you you put an indicator right so if the right light is glowing everybody will know that you are turning right if the ha uh, yes good shivangi so if the left light is uh, uh, no put then you move uh, move uh oh all right guys then i'll just refresh once okay all right oh you can see me now fine all right guys fine fine okay good good yashvangi yes absolutely anupama so that is telling you about the health of the environment okay so like how you use this ph strip as an indicator yes it is an indicator of the ph likewise if you use the vehicle okay so all those right and the left lamp it is going to be an indicator of where you are going to turn likewise the health of the environment how the environment is if this environment thank you thank you himani yes shivangi come on all ha huh. so if at all this environment is pollution free okay so if it is going to be pollution free all these organisms will be present see this water by seeing the water only you can see the quality of the water is very clean so in such place only this river otter it will survive okay so if at all the area is getting polluted they will not stay in that area they will immediately quit that area so that is an indication that the area is clean or that area is going to be damaged 
ओके फाइन यस एब्सोल्युटली या ही मैंने सो द नेक्स्ट वन दैट यू सी इज दिस एम्फीबियन दिस एम्फीबियंस आर वेरी गुड एम्ब्लम ऑफ पोल्यूशन ओके सो व्हाट दिस एम्फीबियंस डू दिस एम्फीबियंस दे हैव अ वेरी वेरी thin skin the skin is very very fragile what do you mean by fragile it is very soft or tender so if at all the area is polluted or there is going to be this ozone hole okay what will happen uv will penetrate through that hole so that is going to fall on these amphibians can you see the deformity here can you see the deformity what happened to this poor uh, frog yes ha ah, it is getting deformed isn't it so it is it is having an extra limb very you uh, know to see only it is a deformity it is very scary why this happened because maybe there is a ozone hole right so through that uv has passed through so that is creating such mutation or this deadly thing it is creating so this is going to be an indicator okay so if there are more frogs that says that the environment is healthy yes if there is no amphibian okay so the amphibian they are the indicator species see here there were actually 168 amphibian species they have gone extinct in just 20 years okay why they are very very sensitive in 20 years only 168 variety of amphibian species has gone extinct that means our environment is deteriorating okay right so it is it is all due to this environmental factors only all right so this is a good example of the indicator species okay it tells about the environment right what about this lichens yeah these bushy lichens they will grow only in the jungle these days yeah because they need a clean air so even if little bit of pollution is there they cannot survive so they need such a clean air but if at all pollution is there little bit you can see this leafy lichen and if it is uh, more polluted you find this crusty crusty lichens you can find if there is uh, heavy pollution like our cities yeah too much pollution you don't find any lichens correct no yes ha huh. so this is what is called as an indicator species okay so shall we sum up so two species we have learned so far number 1 we have learned about the keystone species number 2 we have learned about the indicator species keystone species means it is going to be low in abundance right and then it is going to have a high impact all right number 3 it is going to say that if you remove them it is collapsing the environment or ecosystem right so what is the indicator species it tells about the overall environmental health okay yes so certain species we saw this river otter so it will grow only in the pollution free zone pollution free water only this is going to show okay right so what about this red panda see panda they are the specialized species they come under the flag shape okay it is an ambassador species okay so the moment you see the panda you recollect something so that is what is called as the ambassador species okay right we'll come to it ha ah, river otter it is an indicator species amphibians yeah so they are also indicator species lichens yes they are also coming under the indicator species so if there is no pollution they all will be there okay yes so this amphibian whenever there is a deformity it is an indication that our environment is too much polluted got it right so we will make up a move towards the next species i think this is what you asked for so coming to this panda okay 
So remember this Kumfu Panda. Mm, yeah, that is a specialized species and it is coming under the flagship also. Why flagship? I am hiding this cute little panda. Uh, just a minute guys. I will show you this panda. I will just shift it here. Alright. Why to hide this beautiful uh, panda? <laughs> Alright. Yes. Right. So it, it comes under both. Okay. So it is, it is correct. So it is under specialist only. Why specialist? Because it eats only the bamboo. Isn't it? Uh, so this comes under the specialist also. Correct. So many species are overlapping. One is specialist, other one it is coming under the flagship species. So why it is flagship? Because you see something, then you recollect. So that is what is called as ambassador. Right? So in our olden days, whenever this boost advertisement was given, uh, you remember Sachin? He used to come up for the boost ad. You remember? So he is the brand ambassador for the boost. Right? Right? Absolutely. Huh. So, if at all, uh, now Virat Kohli is coming. Isn't it? So, he is coming up for the boost ad. So, he is the brand ambassador for this. Got it? Yes. So, likewise, this cute little panda, very cute fellow, he is going to serve as the brand ambassador for WWF. What is this? World Wildlife Fund. Okay, right, absolutely. So, this World Wildlife Fund, this cute little panda, it is an ambassador. So, the moment you see this, you recollect that, okay, it is that. So, that is what is called as the flagship species. Got it? Yes. And many of the endangered species, they also come under the flagship. Because whenever you see them, you keep telling yourself that these are all endangered. You have to save them like the dolphin a whale, they all come under this flagship species. Okay? Apart from that, you take this Bengal tiger, African elephant, all of them, they come under the flagship. Right? So, the next one is about this umbrella species. Okay? So, how many species then? Keystone, indicator, flagship, three species we are done. Okay? The fourth one it is the umberla species. Okay. So, see, this is an umberla, right? Fine. So, this umberla is going to cover a lot of people. That is why you call them as an umberla species. Okay. So, by saving them, you are going to save a lot of one. Okay. So, that is what is called as an umberla. Okay. So, think of a tiger. If at all, a tiger has to live in a particular place. What are the requirements for the tiger? Hmm? So, what does a tiger require to survive? Yes. Will the tiger require water? Yes. Will the tiger require a place like den to live? It is a deep forest. Huh? It will not come on roads, isn't it? Internal only all the tigers will survive. Right. What else it require? Ah, correct. It requires water. It requires food. No. So, it wants a variety of food. Maybe it wants a deer. It wants a rabbit. It wants a goat. Right. So, all the different varieties it wants. So, if at all a tiger is surviving in an area, it absolutely represents that there is water in the place. There is a deep forest. Den is there. Ah, yeah, Nazneen. It wants a habitat, no? So, it wants all the deer, rabbit, goat, every food to be ready. Okay? So, if all these are present, absolutely this is going to be a good environment for all. Right? So, if you conserve a tiger, what will happen? If you are conserving a tiger, the total system is conserved. Yes? Right. So, it is like an umber life. You safeguard the tiger, the total one is safeguarded. Okay. Right. So, there will be, if at all, uh, no, you are going on a trip. Okay. Right. So, amongst your family or amongst your friend, there will be one person who needs all the sophistication. Yes. Huh. So, they want a good uh, place. Okay. So, they want a good Wi-Fi. Right. So, they want a good uh, thing. Yes, absolutely. 
right so the habitat absolutely correct so it wants all this habitat everything to be ready isn't it so if at all you are conserving the tiger indirectly you are conserving the deer rabbit and goat correct so because if this deer rabbit and goat is alive only the tiger will survive or else how will the tiger survive got the point yes so that is what is called as the umbrella species so if you survive this big fellow ah uh, everything is getting uh, safeguarded okay i'll just tell you one example then you will get it very nicely see so there is a house okay right so in this one big cozy cozy fellow is there okay so he wants az he wants a bed okay he wants good food right yes and then uh, he wants good dresses too okay right so all these are in this place right so there is one more fellow who can adjust even without az okay so he can adjust even without bed okay right fine so now if you conserve him this a person he cannot come and stay here correct got the point if you if you conserve this person okay so he will have only food and just for name sake he is having a shelter that's all this cannot be conserved here a cannot live here but if you conserve this a right definitely b's requirement is very less very happily b can stay in this place correct or not you understood so now which is the umbrella species a or b tell me which is this umbrella species a or b think think yes everyone so there are two people one is a one is b if i want this a to be good i have to give him an az a good food a bed and a good shelter okay so if i want to make it for b ha uh, i have to simply provide him food and shelter there is no ac there is no bed okay correct so if i conserve a b is automatically met right but if i conserve b a cannot stay here no because it wants an ac there is no ac here got it so only a it is called as umbrella species in simple words i can put that the requirement okay this requirement it is very big for a okay so everything is covered got it everything gets covered in a all right so if everything is getting covered in a you don't have to worry at all got it anybody can come and stay in the place where a is stay but if you look the other sub species like uh, your b it is suitable for b but a cannot come and stay because it doesn't have this conditions got it so now you understand this umbrella species see here the umbrella species it is the organism whose protection it is going to provide the production of variety of other organisms got it yes that means that these species they have a very very large habitat needs they have a very large habitat needs so if you satisfy them everybody will get satisfied got it yes so whose conservation it results in many species being conserved at the level yes everyone so four species we have done shall we make a recap yes all come on number 1 it was which species keystone species good what was number 2 it was the indicator species too good what was number 3 come on guys what was number 3 number 3 it was about the flagship species good number 4 yes all it is going to be this umbrella species so what is the characteristic of keystone species it is 
low in abundance good this is going to tell about this environmental health uh, apart from low in abundance it is a uh, you no know, very important one if you remove them it is going to collapse isn't it so that is also the important term yes the next one it is the flagship species it is serving as the brand ambassador okay and umbrella species it has a large requirement very good so it has a large requirement if you conserve him anybody can live in that place got it so now these four types of species are done all right what is this this is called as the gazi bear ha huh? so this bear wants water this bear wants grassland it wants you uh, know the snowy place a wonderful environment right absolutely yes so if at all you are able to conserve this bear the total environment is now protected got it yes so all the species can get protected yeah so this is for the conservation purpose all right fine so this is about the umbrella species it is pretty big all are coming under you know the inside so that is uh, about uh, you know you are umbrella species okay so the next species that we are going to learn it is called as the dominant species okay fine so what is this dominant species the species that is predominating that means it is more in number right so that is what is called as the predominating so in case of the keystone species it was low in abundance but this dominant species they are more in number they, that means they are more you know predominating yes absolutely so they are numerous okay fine so if at all yeah if at all they are more in number the effect is going to be more okay so if at all they are less in number proportionate no effect is less right ha ah, good <laughs> yeah himani yes absolutely so there is no impact on them. so this is what is called as the dominant species clear yes very good himani come on yes anupama absolutely correct yes yes nazneen i am just reading the comment nandini very good yes kavya okay good all come on right yes so in in western countries this alness okay so this is the alder so this is a dominant one everywhere you can find it out then it is called as the dominant one okay right yes and then if you see the sea floor this brittle stars they are going to be more in number they are dominant okay right so what about our country we have this ha uh, what is this estuarine don't we have this estuarine what is an estuary yes what is an estuary or estuarine hmm the estuarine it is the region where the sea is going to meet the land okay so it is highly marshy right yes very very marshy so there you will not find much uh, species so this is dominated by one variety yes where you find the estuaries ah yes absolutely yes nandini so you find it uh, no in the sundarban region you find it down south also in pichavaram we do have this estuary so this is the region where you know where it is dominated by one variety of species that is what is called as an estuary okay where only one plant is totally it is growing see all are same no no variety if you look near your area you will find a variety of plants right so they are absolutely anpama so uh, you will you will find a mango tree you will find a neem tree you will find uh, no uh, this jackfruit tree you will find many trees in your street right ha uh, but in case of the estuary all trees are same it is a mangrove species it is growing under much stress halo tolerant halophiles ha uh, so this is going to be this rhizoporosia okay so what it does it is only growing there not others are growing okay 
right so it is dominated only one variety is there no more variety then it becomes the dominant species so how is the abundance it is high in abundance if it is going to be the keystone species it is going to be low in abundance right but this fellow he is going to be high in abundance got it yes ha ah, yeah cedrus correct so these are all high in abundance yes absolutely so this is what is called as the dominant species okay so these are all going to be the dominant species all right good yes yes so this is what is the dominant species the next type of species that yes we are going to see it is the invasive species okay i'll ask you a question right so some species from the foreign has come okay right it is not affecting you okay right so it is happily surviving and it is not affecting you okay will it be invasive will you call it as a invasive species hmm think and tell me it is not creating any kind of nuisance to you okay so that uh, foreign plant it is happily growing in your uh, in your garden okay it is not creating any trouble to you will you call it as an invasive species since because it has come from other one you'd never call them invasive okay ha ah, it is not invasive species who is invasive if at all if at all it is problematic then alone you call it as a invasive okay so if at all it is coming from outside you call it as an exotic right so you call it as you know the alien species right that's all if at all this alien species is becoming it is creating a problem then only you call it as a invasive species got the difference ha huh? so invasive species is different and then your exotic species is different exotic means it comes from outside okay right yes absolutely so if it is going to yeah it is it's a foreign species only correct so it doesn't mean that all the foreign species will be harmful okay have you ever seen a turkey hmm so you could have seen a turkey okay yes so if it is going to be this turkey yes it is it is it is looking good okay so it is also going to yield a very good thing for the farmers right so it is not going to create any kind of nuisance right so if it is not creating any kind of nuisance it is no more called as a invasive species okay so if at all it is going to create a problem right then only you call them as you uh, know then only you call them as a invasive species or else you just call them as a you know exotic species that's all it is non invasive okay so it is not it is it is no more becoming uh, problematic to you right so then you are all you uh, know worried right so one question was there like what is going to be the feral species okay feral means they do not depend on the human okay right yes for example yeah so you can you can you can take up anything so these are the individual uh, you know indigenous plants right ha huh. so uh, these feral animals or these feral plants they are not depending okay so they are not depending on the human so that is what is called as the feral okay right yes so certain things yeah so that are domesticated okay right yes so uh, no they, they are uh, dependent i'm sorry so they are all dependent so they become the feral ones okay so if at all our human is there then only we will be feeding the cows so we will we are only feed, uh, feeding uh, no so all these uh, dogs okay so that is what is called as the feral all right yes okay so anpam i hope that all doubts are done right okay so i hope that invasive species is also clear and then this uh, feral species is also clear all right yes fine so feral feral it is it is uh, no yeah so that is only uh, representing all these uh, animals right 
yes okay so coming back here shall we just make up a move okay so coming to this invasive species i told you that invasive means they are going to uh, yeah so they are going to create some damage okay right so for instance you take this icornia what this icornia is doing to us too much damaging no all our lakes are uh, filled with this uh, species only water hyacinth it is icornia so what it does it is really damaging us isn't it so it will cut the all the dissolved oxygen so there won't be any fish so the total one is getting affected isn't it right so it is it is absolutely becoming uh, no invasive so from where it has come right so where it has come it has come from the amazon basin okay right so that is where it is being imported and it is killing us isn't it so that is why it is called as an invasive species so if not it has not uh, created uh, any more trouble then you you don't take it as an invasive species okay but this fellow is creating a trouble so it is one what about this parthenium yeah and uh, introduced and it is creating problem that is why it is called as invasive see this parthenium it, it creates you know allergy to the asthma patients yes absolutely ha ah, so it is the allergy you uh, know to this asthma patients okay to everybody also all these pollen grains are there their dispersal rate is very high okay so if you if you take your normal plant and keep it will take a lot of time to grow you have to water it properly you have to take care of it so much Ah, huh? but if you keep the if, if at all there is one parthenium in your area, the total area will spread to become a parthenium only, isn't it? Right. So that is the dispersality. It is very high. A uh, plasticity is too high. So they grow very nicely in all these area. Yes. Okay. Fine. And then this is also a very very common tree. Yeah. So this is this Sorobsis, isn't it? Sorobsis juliflora. so this is also present everywhere almost so this is an exotic tree it is a very top invader okay so this is also imported from america only south and central america it has come and it is taking all the thing so it will drink water it will spread like anything ha huh? but it is it is it is uh, making all this uh, native plants to get dispo- displaced okay so the native plants it is going to get displaced because of this got it yes everyone it is clear ha huh, okay got it good all right so now this is about one more concept okay i think the question is partial all right so let us solve few questions before we are uh, going to see it another important uh, point okay so let us take this uh, question on board right which of the following statement is incorrect okay about the keystone species yes all shall we just give a try with this question come on everyone right yes so which of the species is is going to i uh, know which of the following statement it is incorrect with reference to this keystone species yes all come on you can give a try with this question am i visible all right yes so number 1 says that the species that is other than the consumer it can become a keystone species option b states that this keystone species they have an influence on the community that is highly proportionate to its abundance if you remove the keystone species okay it can reduce the species richness of the community ha ah, if you remove the keystone species it can affect the tropic levels causing a cascade very good all yes all hmm think and tell me ah good so if you take the option b it says that the keystone species yes nandini yes anupama kavya yes ah correct all the incorrect statement is b 
Why? Because it says that it is proportionate to its abundance. I told you several times, it is low in abundance. It is not proportionate. It is low in abundance. Right? So, absolutely that is going to be the incorrect statement. What about the first one? I told you, no. Bees, hummingbirds, flying fox, all are going to be the keystone species. It is not that only the consumer should be the keystone species. Anything can become a keystone species. Okay? Right? So, that is a correct one only. Ah, so, it is, it is also correct. Not only the prey predator and not only the consumer. Anything can become a keystone. If you remove that, the ecosystem should collapse. That is the only condition. Alright. So, now you got the answer. We will make a move towards the next uh, question. Okay. So, five more questions are there. So, don't get, uh, no, don't move away. <laughs> Alright. Fine. Good. So, this is the study planner as given by me. So, uh, for your uh, June 21 examination, if you are targeting definitely every day a minimum of 100 minute learning is needed, right? A minimum I am telling you. So, this 100 minute learning, if at all it is going to be highly condensed, then it is of great help, okay? So, if at all you are learning on your own, then also per day try to learn the 10 hour model, then only it will be very easy for you to make notes and study, okay? So, if at all you are with us at an academy plus then you need not worry because I am going to take care of all the notes making for you and you have to simply take notes from the lectures, right? So, ecology, it will take 20 classes, biochemistry, these are the units that I am taking. Ecology, I am taking biochemistry, methods, evolution, molecular biology, developmental biology, cell biology, applied and then part B, I am doing a separate booster plan for it and PYQs, okay. So, you will require a minimum of 130 days to do it, uh, you, only that you have in your hand, huh? because 30 days I put it for revision, 30 days for general loss, like you go for uh, no, a function, you have a weekend, you want to relax, festival, so leave away 30 days. So, time is already up. So, no more waiting, right? Okay, so we have come up with best batches for you. So, this is the focus CSER net June 2021 batch. So, in that, you know, I am conducting the classes and they had already started by December 3rd. So, the last December I was taking ecology. Okay, so this upcoming month I will take biochemistry in this batch course. So, enroll at the earliest if you have not yet enrolled. And one more batch course I am running is with GATE. Okay. So, uh, for GATE, I am taking up a practice booster course. So, this will be helpful for Excel as well as for BT. Okay. So, both the things I am taking up. So, we are practicing almost like 20 year question papers we are practicing. Okay. So, this is also very important course. Don't miss out this. So, these are the individual courses. Got it? Okay. Coming to the next question. Cheer up guys. Come on. So, following four types of species were observed in a community. Let us check out the definition. Yes. Okay. The species A. Okay. Yeah. So, the species A, it is going to contain the large effect on the community. Why? Because it is abundant. Got it. Okay. The species B, it has a large role in the community, but it is going to be, yes, uh, yes, I mean actually. So, the time for the gate classes, it is going to be 4 to 5.30 p.m. Okay, right? Yes, absolutely. Fine, good, right. So, coming back here. So, the species B, it is going to have a large role in the community out of proportion to its abundance. Right. So, the status of species C, it is providing the information on overall health of the ecosystem. Okay. So, the significant conservation resources, they are allocated to the species C species D, okay, yes, which is single, large and identifiable or recognizable. Yes, Gayatri, Nandini, Adupama, yes, Meenakshi, thank you. So, which of the following is correct? Ah, very good. 
yes your option a is very apt isn't it so it is because of its abundance it is proportional no so it is going to be a dominant species absolutely it has a large role but it is out of proportion means it is keystone health of the environment it is the indicator correct all are direct no recognizable it is flagship got it all i hope that this is all clear all right yes see one more question of similar type so the following are the descriptions used by the conservation biologist for characterizing the species or groups in a community right the species with disproportionately large effect on its environment relative to its abundance the species that is defining a triad or characteristic of the environment the species whose conservation leads to the direct production of other species the species which is instantly recognizable and used as the focus of border conservation effort so what do you call them as yeah so which of the following options is correct so keystone species indicator flagship umbrella keystone indicator umbrella flagship indicator flagship umbrella keystone <sighs> umbrella indicator keystone and flagship good so mm, very good all yes nandini anupama gayatri kavya yes minakshi okay see disproportionate keystone right so environment indicator right ha huh. this one umbrella conservation it is umbrella okay so it is recognizable and used as the broader conservation effort so that is going to be the flagship so which is the correct one a should be keystone and then indicator and then umbrella and flagship b is going to be the correct answer yes all got it now right absolutely so this is the way that you have to prepare for your exams right so i do have many courses so if at all you have missed the live session don't worry you can have a look at you uh, know the recorded version always accept your past even in the past if you have not you uh, know made it uh, well that is okay you can absolutely come up in the future so don't get stuck with the past right yes so you can use my code saranya life so that is going to give you a 10% off on the total fees all right fine so what are the benefits of the course so uh, what is the pros of taking us you uh, know the course at an academy so you will get the total syllabus coverage because not only me we have a lot of educators along with us who is going to cover a range of syllabus yes you will get a uh, notes or uh, no whatever pdf you are uh, taking up in the class you will get the class notes directly so your notes and pdf are the same and you will practice a lot of mcqs with us you will get a detailed revision series too there is a lot of students on you on board who will create a classroom atmosphere for you it is going to create a competition so that will really make you up to perform better yes you have the doubt clearance session so any doubts that you get you can very easily clarify with us you have live polls so you can check your performance and the day scores so you can ab absolutely learn with me you can use my code sarnia live so that is going to get you a 10% off on the total fees so actually there was a price hike yesterday it had to be raised but as majority of the students requested for some more days because it is coming up in the month end so they really wanted to extend it for few days so uh, now our team has extended it for very few days so even before that offer is gone please do and come up with a subscription for one year it is 11550 for six months it is 9.4 and for three months it is 5.25 right so you can use my code sarnia live to get the 10% off these are the testimony that are given by our previous students so they have all qualified with a rank right yes so don't miss out all those opportunity opportunity knocks you only once yes don't miss it and don't regret later use my code and get the edge or the preparation all the very best any doubts please keep you uh, know uh, asking me and always a query mind will learn more 
yes absolutely time is running nobody waits for anything right so keep reading definitely you need to put a lot of work that is only going to give you a success so today's summary shall we make yes all come on so today's summary number 1 it was on the keystone species number 2 it was on ha huh, which species keystone species and then indicator species right number 3 it was the flagship species and then we learnt about this umbrella species all right number 5 what we learnt yes after the umbrella species we learnt about the dominant species right number 6 we learnt about the invasive species remember not all the exotic are invasive got it Okay guys so i hope that this class was helpful to you in your preparation so all the very best i will catch you up later in my course so please do feel free to attend all the special classes so these special classes are conducted at our an academy platform right so you can enroll there you can create a login and for attending all the special classes it will ask you a code so you can use my code saranya live All right so that is going to help you a lot okay guys keep learning keep revising i'll catch you up in another interesting session bye bye take care till we meet thank you all have a nice sleep yes i'll catch you up next week bye bye all thank you take care all